Hi, my name is Chris. In this video, I'm going to show you how I create a simple console application that runs on Java 11 that will connect to a REST service, uh, call it, and take its results and bring it in. The REST service we're going to use is a REST service provided by the adoptopenjdk.net. Uh, you can see here the link is to their API. And the specific call we're going to use for this is release underscore version, this one here. Okay, so let's get started. So the starting point I have here is a Hello World application I built uh, previously. If you're curious how I got to this point, uh, the, there's a link in the description to the video that creates this environment. Um, but in short, the only two pieces to this program is this main app, um, is this class main with a public static void main, and this is the POM, just a very basic POM with Java 11 set as our release. All right, so to get started, we need to bring in uh, some dependencies, and this dependency will allow us to use the Jersey uh, JAX RS implementation in a console application. I'm going to paste it here. You'll notice that it's all red as if it were an error, and with IntelliJ IDEA, what you want to do is go here and click this little red circle, and that'll force the IDE to resolve the dependencies that I just pasted in. You'll see down here that it's pulling down all the source code and all the documentation and preparing it for use. Excellent. I will have a copy of these dependencies, this, this block of code, in the description if you're looking to copy and paste it for yourself. Alright, let's get started. So the first thing we need to do is figure out what the URL is going to be for our first REST call. And really it starts here, okay? And then the rest of it is this part here. So what we're gonna do over here is I'm gonna delete this line of code for a moment. I'm just gonna put a comment and come back here. And the rest call we want is this, this part here. So what we're looking to do is send an HTTP uh, get method to that URL. Just briefly, if we open this up here and look at the parameters, the first thing I'm going to do is ignore the parameters for the moment and look at the response. It's going to respond to code 200 when it works, which is okay. And then it's going to respond, us, respond to us with um, an object or a list of objects that look like this. But we'll, let's start basically. Let's first get our code to make a call to the trust API and get the status code. So the first thing we want to do is create a client. All right, you'll see that's a JAX WS RS client. So we'll call it a REST client. We will press Alt Enter to automatically add the import. We're going to use the client builder object to build this client. And we're going to call the new client method to get an instance to it. The next thing we need to do is build an object called a web target. I just pressed Alt Enter to bring in the import. And we're going to use a method on the REST client to build this target object. And we're going to call the method target. We're going to use the version that takes a string. All right, quote, quote, for the moment. All right, and we're going to copy this URL into here. Great. Now that represents the URL that we're going to call. Now we need an object called an invocation builder. And we get one of these objects by calling a method off of target. I'm going to call this invoker. So we're going to be building a request. All right. And it's asking us what type of media type are we expecting to get back? We're expecting it JSON back. So we're going to use the media type um, object, which has some constants on there. And we want the one that says application JSON type. All right, great. And now we want to actually call the REST service. 
So when we call, when we use the invoker to call the service, it's going to return a response object. Import that. We're going to do invoker, and we're going to call the get method. All right. So at this point, the REST API will have been called, and we will have gotten a response, which hopefully has a 200 in it. So we're going to print out the status code and a description of it from the response object. There is a status method here that gets us the number. And then we can use the status info object to get a description of that code. So this way we don't have to hard code a list of 200 is this, 210 is that. We'll let the API do that work for us. All right, and now we'll just give this a run. I'm going to use the debugger to run it. We're going to say OK to this. So at this point, it's made a call to this REST API. It's returned us some JSON objects, which we've ignored at the moment. But we did get our 200 response out of it, which turns into an OK message. Great. So now we want to turn the JSON objects into actual Java objects. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to copy this to my clipboard. And I'm going to open up a terminal window here. And I'm going to use curl to call this API. Curl stands for command line URL, and it comes with uh, most computers. I think Linux, Mac, and Windows all have it built in at this point. I'm just going to scroll to the top here. So you can see that this API returned us a JavaScript, I'm sorry, a JSON object, which has an, um, a top level object that has an array of objects called the versions. And those objects have these properties on it. All right, which I'm going to call version. So what we're going to do is we're going to create a Java object that mirrors this JSON object. So what we're going to do is we're going to go into our project and we're going to create a new class. I'm just going to call it a version. And we're going to add this to version control. All right. So what I generally do to build these is I copy this text into my editor. And I kind of turn it into Java properties. All right. So I'm going to line these up here. I'm going to use my Alt key and draw a line straight down because now I can edit these lines all at once. So I'm going to delete that quote. And I'm going to make these private. I'm going to guess a type for the moment. I'm going to press end and I'm going to press semicolon. All right, now I got something to start with. We're going to look at each of these properties and figure out what Java type we want to map that to. That looks like an integer. There's no quotes around it, right? So we'll, we'll leave this as an integer and I'll close that out. Major looks like an integer as well. Minor appears to be an integer, so we'll do this. Okay. Um, that's a string. It's surrounded in quotes, so we'll leave. We'll get rid of this, and we'll make this a string. Okay. Um, optional is also a string, so we'll make this a string, and we'll get rid of that. Security appears to be an integer, so we'll do this, and then semver appears to be a string. Right, now let's turn this into a Java, uh, a plain old Java bean. So I'm going to do right click, and I'm going to say generate getters and setters. I'm going to choose all of those properties. And now we've got getters and setters. Um, last, we're going to introduce um, a two string method. So it looks pretty when we look at it in a debugger. So I'm going to press Control O. I'm going to override two string. All right. And then we're going to return. Um, I think we're just going to return the OpenJDK version. Next, I'm going to make this code look presentable. I'm going to highlight everything with Control A, and I'm going to use Control Alt L to reformat it. And now we have a plain old Java object that represents the version. Now, if you remember, I said before that there's a top level object called the versions, or what we're going to call versions, um, and it has a property called the versions. So it has a list of these version objects. So we're going to create a versions class, add that to our version control, and we're going to create a private list of version, bring that in, 
and we'll call it versions. Uh, we're also going to generate a getter setter pair for it. All right. And then we'll also create a two string. We're going to hit control O to override and we'll pick two string. And I'm going to add in the size of the list. I'm adding a null check here just in case uh, it's not initialized. Instead of seeing the phrase versions null, you'll just see versions. And we'll reformat this as well with Control A and Control Alt L. Cool, got it right the first time. Okay, so now the question is how do we get the JAX RS API to turn that JSON into our objects? And it's actually quite simple. We're going to declare versions reference. And we're going to make it equal to response dot read entity. We're going to pass in a new generic type uh, with an open curly closed brace next to it. Uh, and then that's it. And then what we're going to do here is print out versions. So when I run this, what I'm expecting to see is versions and a number 10. And I'll explain to you why in a moment. But that's what I expect to see. So I can give this a whirl. And there it is, versions 10, and it's read 10 objects in. But let's take a look at it. We want to make sure it actually did what we said it did. So I'm going to put a breakpoint here and just run our debugger to that point in the code. And I'm going to take a look at this versions reference that we made. And there's versions 10. If I open it up, there's the array list filled in for versions. And I open this up, and there's uh, 10 objects, and there's the version numbers. And that's our two string method being called in each one. And if I pick one here at random, we can see there are the properties from the JSON, and they were brought into our Tor Java objects. So that's kind of neat. Next, I'm going to show you how to pass in a query parameter to the REST uh, API so we can customize our response a little bit. So if we come back to the documentation of the REST API, and we'll scroll back up, there's these query parameters that we can pass in. And one of them is page size, and it tells you how many objects it will send back to you in a page. And you'll see here the default value is 10. And as you saw, we got 10 results back. So we're going to do, uh, we're going to take this page size parameter, and we're going to pass in 15 and make this list a little bit longer. And the way you do that is at the end of this dot target call, we're going to do a dot query param call. We're going to pass in page size. And we're going to tell it we like a page size of 15. Okay. And once again, I'll put a breakpoint here and we'll run it. And if all goes well, and it did, we see that we got 15 objects back. And there they are, all 15 that we asked for, 0 through 14. And that's pretty much it.